involved in European research regarding the adrenal hormone that is the subject of his lecture today. Please welcome Dr. Daniel Sister. Hello, good afternoon. I have the hard task to wake you up after the, after the lunch. And we are going to talk about the DHEA and the subject was, well, they asked me to talk, is DHEA the last miracle treatment for rejuvenation? It's hard uh, to say that because what is rejuvenation and can you call miracle something which is naturally produced by and in the body? DHEA right now in Europe is the subject of many articles, a lot of magazine and newspaper writing about DHEA and not always with all the accurate information. The trend in France at least is to say that we don't have enough backup to know if DHEA is really interesting, is there any side effect, dangerous or whatever. What I'm going to try to do today is to give you as much information about all the studies that back up the interest of DHEA and prove that it is really, in fact, a uh, very interesting and promising hormone in treatment. I cannot call it miracle, as I say, because it's something which is naturally produced in the body. Um, rejuvenating is what? Doing better, living better, having a better life. So it's not really anti-aging. It's more in terms of quality than in terms of quantity. Hormone research is like clumsily putting together a gigantic jigsaw puzzle. The more we learn, the more we, have, we realize that we have to learn more and to work more. DHEA, I was involved with DHEA research since 1973 when I, was, when I did publish in French the first article regarding the DHEA hormone. So it's about 30 years. I'm, looking after that. Uh, it's a little strange to talk about DHEA here today because we had um, Dr. Hertog who just released a book all about DHEA, which he knows at least as much as me, if not much more. But I will try to do my best anyway. So DHEA is a steroid hormone which is naturally produced, as I say, mainly by the adrenal glands. But little amounts are also produced by the brain for its own personal usage as well as sexual glands, ovaries and testicle, and even some little quantities are secreted by the digestive tube. So it's not only by the adrenal. Uh, it's a metabolic product of pregnant alone, which itself is produced from cholesterol. Um, some researchers call DHEA the mother hormone because it's metabolic precursor uh, source ingredient for all other steroid hormones, including estrogen, testosterone, and cortisone. Now, when people say we don't have enough data as a backup regarding DHEA, the first time DHEA was mentioned was discovered is in 1940s. So it's a long time ago. And since that time, there is more than 4,000 medical papers, studies, books um, that were released on all the effect and all what you can expect from DHEA. So when you read in the press that it could be interesting, but we don't have enough backup, we don't know if it's good to use it, and things like that, it just means that those people didn't do their homework correctly. DHEA is the most abundantly produced adrenal hormone in the body, 10 to 20 times more than any other. Although with age, stress, or certain disease condition, uh, the level drops dramatically. Roughly, DHEA is produced at a level of 31 milligrams per day for men, 19 for women, versus androstenedione, which is only 1.5 milligram a day. Estradiol would be 0.1 milligram a day. T3, T4 would be 0.1 milligram a day. Human growth hormone, 0.3 milligram a day. So you see that DHEA is definitely the most abundant hormone produced in the body. We'll come to that later. Um, 
Interestingly also, DHEA is very abundant in the blood, but the concentration in the brain is two to four times higher than what it is on the circulating blood. Scientific investigators interested in the biology of aging and focus their attention on DHEA and its sulfated form, which is DHEA sulfate, which is a way you can make dosage to trace things in the body. DHEA and DHEA sulfate are regarded as our hormone of use because levels of this hormone in both men and women peak in early adulthood and then decrease uh, with age in linear fashion. The daily production of DHEA drops from about 1 to 3 percent per year, generally, generally speaking, after 30 years. 30 milligram is normal at age 20 to less than 6 milligram at age 80. In some people, DHEA level decline even 95% during the lifetime, the largest decline of important biochemical, biochemical yet documented. DHEA and DHEA sulfate are adrenal precur precursor steroids which are transformed into androgen, male hormone, and or estrogen, female hormone, in peripheral target tissues. The amount of DHEA sulfate and DHEA that are converted into androgen and or estrogen are dependent upon the level of various and various metabolizing enzymes expressed by these tissues. The importance of DHEA and DHEA sulfate is evident by the finding that roughly 50% of total androgens in adult men are derived from these adrenal pre precursor steroids. In women, the best estimate by researchers of the formation of estrogen in peripheral tissues from DHEA, DHEA sulfate is approximately 75% before menopause and about 100% after menopause. Both DHEA and DHEA sulfate are totally interconvertible in plasma, meaning that DHEA can be transformed into sulfate and sulfate could be transformed back into DHEA that happened uh, in the liver. So what could someone really expect by taking uh, DHEA supplements? As I say, there is more than 4,000 studies about DHEA that have been published by now. And those studies are coming not only from the United States, but from over the, all over the world. Um, two observations at the beginning have caused the scientific community to give considerable, considerable attention to DHEA and DHEA sulfate. First, uh, unlike other adrenal steroids with serum level are rel relatively stable uh, when, uh, with aging, Circulating level of DHEA and DHEA sulfate decline, as I said before, uh, with aging. DHEA is found in the human body at very um, high level, up to 25 years, and then it drops. And we saw before um, when you do. Can we go back on the slide before? Yes, thank you. Uh, when you do dosage of DHEA sulfate, um, here you can see what should be the optimum and what you could consider as a deficiency for men and women, acute, medium, and light. Um, and now you have the convertible. That was taken from a Thierry Hertog book. Thank you. Uh, the reduction, the 70-95% reduction in the formation of DHEA sulfate by the adrenal during aging result in dramatic reduction in the formation of androgen and estrogen in peripheral tissues. The second study is numerous work on animals have demonstrated the beneficial effect of DHEA in preventing obesity, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, enhancing the immune system, and eventually prolonging lifespan. These observations have led investigators to speculate that some of the degenerative change associated with human aging may be related to a progressive deficit in circulating DHEA and DHEA sulfate. When you do take DHEA, if you need to, we'll come back to that at the end, most people feel a substantial increase in energy level and well-being after even a week or two, which is quite fast. They slept better, handled stress better, and felt more relaxed. And when, obviously, when physical energy is increased, libido, sex drive is enhanced, appetite is reduced, and other subtle effects occur. People generally feel as good as they did when they were younger. In that sense, it is it could be called a rejuvenating miracle. So, 
what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try to give you background of studies proving the real effect of DHEA. So it's not my word, it's kind of a review of very interesting work that were published in different countries proving all the effects of the DHEA. So when you read a newspaper after that, the DHEA could be interesting, but there is no studies to back up um, all the information. You would have another knowledge. So aging as its um, anti-aging conference. In Southern California, a group of middle-aged to elderly men and women were given either the naturally uh, hormone DHEA or placebo, and then were followed clo follow closely followed for one year. Subjects receiving DHEA were found to have a 75% overall improvement in health, which include marked increase in psychological well-being and ability to cope. The design of the study entailed building level of the hormone in the body equal to that of a healthy 30 years old man. At his conclusion, those who received the DHEA reported noticeable increase in mobility and ability to cope with stress. Subject also report improved ease with sleeping, less joint pain, joint pain, and for the men increase in lean muscle mass and decrease in fat. And there were no reported side effects. DHEA level have been directly correlated with mortality uh, in human. In a 12-year study, over 240 men, 12-year study, so nobody can say that we don't have real serious studies to back up um, what we say about DHEA. So that study of 240 men aged from 50 to 79 years, researchers found that DHEA level were inversely related to mortality from all causes. Those findings suggest that measurement of DHEA level could be a standard diagnostic precursor, predictor of disease, mortality, and lifespan. <coughs> DHEA decreased precipitously with age in a linear fashion in both men and women. In animal studies, DHEA has extended lifespan up to 50%. Dr. Arthur Schwartz, a leading DHEA researcher from Temple University in the States, has reported that DHEA-treated mice not only live longer, but they look younger too. The graying coarse hair control can easily be distinguished from the sleek black-haired DHEA-treated animals. But not only on aging in general, DHEA is also very interesting for the immune function. The DHEA group was found with the DHEA group of the men we were talking before uh, was found to have a higher concentration of IGF-1 insulin growth factor, an indication of increased growth hormone release. Growth hormone, human growth hormone, is one of the other major anti-aging hormones, implying um, a general de-aging process associated with enhanced immune function. DHEA may have the ability to maintain immune system synchronization. And in different human studies, and now I'm talking about human studies, not in animal, not in labs, DHEA increased the number of monocyte immune cells, B immune cells, and B cell activity, uh, T cell activity, interleukin-2, and interferon gamma, while significantly decreasing interleukin-6 and 10, thus regulating cytokine production. Right now, there are even some treatment for HIV with added DHEA trying to restore the immune, immune function for those people. DHEA and obesity. Um, scientific studies in laboratory animals have shown definite fat loss. These studies provide a ther theoretical basis for thinking that DHEA may help to block synthesis of fat in the human body, leading to less overall body fat. The HA ability to significantly suppress weight gain was first demonstrated in the 70s in genetically obese, obese mice. Since then, numerous studies have demonstrated that DHEA can also reduce weight in obese rat, rabbits, dogs, and some evidence suggests that DHEA simply reduce food intake. According to other studi studies, weight loss due to DHEA supplementation result largely from reduced fat consumption. So basically it helps to rebalance the way we eat. 
And finally, according to recent evidence, DHEA-induced weight loss may result from the hormone's ability to increase thermogenesis. Unlike thermogenesis induced by beta-adrenergic agonists and alpha antagonists, which cause increased fat burning in brown adipose tissue, DHEA-induced thermogenesis seems to result from redirect, redirecting glucose from anabolic fat production into catabolic energy metabolism in the liver. Maybe there is a way to treat obesity there, um, combining DHEA with other thermogenic agents. Um, there is some way of research there. DHEA, heart and cardiovascular disease. Um, there are many experiments suggesting that DHEA has a strong positive correlation with a healthier heart and lower risk of heart disease. In laboratory animal, DHEA has been shown to lower cholesterol, inhibit the formation of atherosclerotic, atherosclerotic plague by 50% and prevent at least a certain kind of induced hypertension. In human, there is even more evidence for the correlation of low level of DHEA and acute heart attacks. Probably the best known study on DHEA and heart disease was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 1986. And once again, the New England Journal of Medicine, 1986, kind of serious backup. Dr. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Barrett Connor and colleagues studied 242 men over a 12 year period. They found that um, an increase, a little increase, 100 picogram per deciliter of DHEA's fat concentration correspond with a 48% reduction in mortality due to cardiovascular disease and 36% reduction in mortality for any reason. The natural level of DHEA was measured and those individuals with higher DHEA sulfate level lived longer and had much lower risk of heart disease. Furthermore, among men with healthy heart, those who had low level of DHEA were 3.3 times more likely to die of heart disease during the next 12 years than those who were with normal DHEA level. Interesting, interesting also there, I'm sure you have heard of a study that was conducted in France by Professor Beaulieu uh, that was called DHEH. Um, Professor Beaulieu is not a strong, is not strongly in favor of DHEA uh, for whatever reason, it's not the point. He didn't want to back up all the study, but he admitted in public, in, in front of journalists, that due to the research that was done on the heart prevention risk, he himself was taking DHEA, even if he didn't want to back up the study he was conducting. No comment on that. Uh, another study analyzed the DHEA and DH sulfate of another 206 middle-aged men receiving elective coronary angiograms. The lowest level of DHEA sulfate corresponded to the greatest level of arterial blockage. DHEA may inhibit abnormal blood palatalate aggregation too. DHEA and diabetes. Um, once again, in animal experiments, the link between DHEA and diabetes is clear. An inbred strain of mice that developed diabetes also experience a spontaneous destruction of the cell in the pancreas that make insulin over the, the course of their lifetime. When this particular strain of mice was given DHEA, the diabetes was rapidly reversed and the pan pancreatic cells were preserved. In a study of other animals without that uh, genetic disorder, DHEA reduced the severity of diabetes resulting from administering diabetes-induced chemical. I don't say that DHEA will cure, cure all diabetes, but definitely there is also some help you could expect from there. In human, DHEA has been shown to increase the sensitivity of cells to insulin. It's very important because non-insulin-dependent diabetes, which is the most common form, is usually characterized by the loss of sensitivity of cells to insulin. So even if diabetes is not the most important thing for DHEA, it could be helpful. And once again, it's not because someone has a diabetes that you cannot give DHEA to that person. 
Another very interesting point is depression. DHEA is associated with depression in women, while low testosterone levels have been correlated with depression in men. It was studied as far back as 1950 as an antidepressant. Once again, we are talking about 1950, and now we're in 2002. So people who say there is no enough data and backup for the HEA have to read more. There was a study that was called the Rancho Bernardo study, um, a cross-sectional population-based study of 699 non-estrogen using postmenopausal women who were screened for depressed mood and had plasma obtained for steroid hormone assays in 1984 to 1987. Plasma level of total estradiol, estrone, testosterone, androstenedione, cortisol, DHEA, DHEA, DHEA sulfate, and mood and depression were assessed using the Beck depression inventory. Result, only DHEA sulfate level were significantly and inversely associated with depression mood, and the association was totally independent of age, physical activity, weight change, alcohol intake, cigarette smoking, marital status, type of menopause, and season of testing. A subset of 31 women with categorically defined depression had lower DHEA level compared with 93 age-matched non-depressed women. I would just want to add something. I know it's the anti-aging conference, and I'm supposed to talk about DHEA as rejuvenation miracle. But talking about depression, it was also tested for young children with major depression. And those young children with major depression were tested and have abnormally low level of DHEA. So it's not only a question of age. Antidepressant activity is part of the DHEA overall anti-aging benefits, but it could be used and there is no reason to keep DHEA for old people. Sometimes it's a question of having a dosage in the blood and no matter how old is the patient, he may sometimes benefit of it. DHEA also has an anti-stress effect, anti -stress effect uh, that may, part, may be part of the antidepressant action. Uh, cortisol, the stress hormone, is elevated in major depression and DHEA counteracts cortisol. So that may be why. Now we are coming to something which at that time is what interests me more. Uh, DHEA and menopause, or what can we do with DHEA and women? So does DHEA influence the onset of menopause? In a recent article, it was quoted that 44.5% fall in serum DHEA from 20, 30 years old to 40, 50 years old age uh, in women could well explain the bone loss and increase FSH LS, LH ratios that precede menopause. To say it simply, women lose almost half their DHEA before the menopause even start. If we are correct in assuming that higher level of estrogen keep FSH low, and if in women DHEA is significant DHEA significantly contribute to the amount of estrogen, then there is very plausible, it is very plausible to theorize that the continuous steep drop in DHEA when aging does play an important role in the onset of menopause. Now, does DHEA as, what effect could you expect on, of, with DHEA on postmenopausal symptoms? Women secrete each day the same quantity of male and female hormone, and the classical treatment of menopause with estrogen and progesterone only uh, are part of the preventive treatment of female aging, because, but we don't use androgen much because androgen for women is commonly poorly understood. In women, adrenal gland produce DHEA, which is converted into testosterone. More and more authors insist today on the necessity for testosterone therapy in aging women in addition with the well-known HRT. As women does not have a prostate and does not and need only a small quantity of testosterone, it is very possible to consider an anti-aging treatment with the HEA in small quantities 
and always under biochemical control. This treatment is not dangerous and there is no risk of whatever. Some finding, some scientific findings from Laval University in Quebec show that DHEA may reverse serious postmenopausal symptoms in women and may be a potent weapon against breast cancer. In a nine-month study on female rats, DHEA reversed bone loss and decre decreased triglycerides. Importantly, it had a non-proliferating androgenic effect on mammary tissue, tissues which inhibited chemically induced breast cancer. Scientists found that DHEA reversed bone loss and increased osteocalcin, indicator, uh, an indicator of bone building, by 115% over control in women receiving it for nine months. Bone density in the hip shows the greatest increase with good progress after six months. So, as osteoporosis is one of the main concerns for women around menopause and postmenopausal, it's interesting also to know that DHE could have some benefits there. Um, in addition to its uh, to those effects on bone, DHEA also has beneficial effect on the reproductive tract without causing proliferation, proliferation of cells in the uterus, unlike estrogen alone, which could lead to cancer. A previous study by the same group found that DHEA also had better cholesterol-lowering effects than synthetic, synthetic estrogen, plus the ability to lower LDL cholesterol somewhat. Uh, on top of this, of its physical benefit, DHEA also appeared to have some mental benefits, as I said before. 80% of the women taking part of the study reported a greater, f a greater feeling of well-being. They slept better, handled stress better, had more energy, and felt more relaxed. And those benefits may be due in part to a DHEA anti-cortisol effect, as I said before. Now, can we use DHEA or can we think of DHEA as uh, hormone replacement therapy for women in menopause? Conventional hormone replacement therapy for women, also very successful by and large, is a mixed blessing with side effects that tend to offset the benefit to some degree. In part, this is because HRT entails the use of synthetic hormones such as progestin and Provera or natural one natural one that are natural for horses, but not for human. Uh, the well-known well drug Premarin is called that because one of it, some of its components are extracted from urine of pregnant mare, which is natural, but still not for women. And there was a big study that was released like two, three weeks ago, a big study that was conducted in the States, and they were using um, that um, premiering, and they had to stop the study after five years instead of conducting, conducting the study over the course of 10 years as they expected because the side effect of that type of HRT was strongly, strongly more dangerous than not taking any HRT. So an attractive alternative to conventional HRT is the use of natural progesterone, that's one thing. But what about DHEA, a hormone whose decline begin rather steeply in our 20s and keep on dropping? DHEA is a precursor to the male hormone, which in turn is a precursor to both testosterone and estrogen. It is known that many, but not all, users of DHEA, particularly women, notice an increase in libido when they take this supplement. This may be due to a significant increase in testosterone, which has a prosexual effect. This effect is more evident in older women, but is still all the studies that were conducted on that um, show the same increase in sexual activity and satisfaction. But a last study was done and released less than a year ago. It was conducted in Italy, um, in Genova, I think, and Pisa University. And researchers there um, made a study just treating women with uh, DHEA. And it's quite intriguing to hear what they say at the end of that. According to those researchers, DHEA appeared to offer some of the same benefits as those of hormone replacement therapy, a regimen that millions of women undergo to maintain health and vigor of their youth. But the data supports um, 
the idea that DHA treatment acts similarly to estrogen progestin replacement therapy. This suggests that DHA is more than a simple diet integrator or a simple anti-aging product, but rather should be considered as an effective hormone replacement therapy. How did they get to that conclusion? Well, um, they were affiliated with two departments of obst obstetric and gynecology in the university, and they set out to determine the effect of DHA administration, 50 milligrams per day, orally for six months. On the front, and they wanted to test everything. So they had a group of women, 31 subjects in this trial, were healthy postmenopausal women, were not receiving, receiving any kind of treatment related to that physio physiological state. They were selected to be either early postmenopausal, 50 to 55, or late postmenopausal, 60 to 65. And within those categories, they were selected to have a body mass index in either the 20 to 24 range, ideal to slightly overweight, or 25 to 30 range, which is overweight to obese. Thus, there were four categories of subject, and part of the objective was to see whether this group would respond differently to DHEA treatment. At the outset, outset of the study, and again after three months and six months, the woman's blood was tested for DHEA, DHEA sulfate, LH, follicle stimulating hormone, progesterone, estrogen, estradiol, androstenedium, testosterone, human growth hormone, IGF-1, osteocalcin to control for the, for, for the bones. Um, at the outset of the study, the older women in both normal and overweight group show substantially lower level of DHEA, DHEA sulfate, and androstenedium than the younger counterpart. Over the course of the study, there were major increase in the blood level of the three, of all three of these hormones in all four groups of women. But the older women show the greatest, greater gains than the younger one, and the disparities between the older and younger group were largely eliminated. To evaluate the progress of age-related bone loss osteoporosis in these women, those researchers made additional, additional measurement of bone mass density in lumbar spine and femur. Over the six-month course of the study, there were no statistically significant, significant change in the density value of any of the four group of women. But the levels of osteocalcin and increased by anywhere from 100, 112% to 171% clearly indicating acceler accelerated bone growth. So why did the bone density not increase? Presumably because the increased bone formation was upsetting what would otherwise have been an age-related decrease in bone density during the six months period. Thus, by taking DHEA, those women were able to more or less stop the clock on bone loss. In another test, the researchers used ultrasound techniques to m measure the thickness of their uterus lining, um, and there were no change in that uterus lining. That's a big concern because endometrial cancer is one of the known risk factors in conventional HRT. Estrogen is belie believed to be the culprit, and even if six months is a short time, short period of time to observe such an effect, it was nonetheless gratifying to note that there was no statistically significant change in endometrial sickness in those women. So all those results and more prompted the researchers to write oral DHEA treatment annulled the difference observed between early and late postmenopause, including those strictly re related to excess body weight. And the results led them to their final conclusion, quoted above, regarding the use of DHEA as effective hormone replacement therapy. That is a very strong endorsement of value of DHEA. Now, DHEA, after all that, all those studies, is very interesting, but it's not for everybody, and it should not be Free cell, on free cell like it is on the state. It is something active, and nobody should take something active without knowing first if they need it, and two, how much they would need. And it's very important that 
the treatment, DHEA treatment is still under um, medical control. It was confirmed by the US Drug Enforcement Administration that DHEA is not an anabolic steroid since it does not promote muscle growth and is not a controlled substance as defined in section 102-6 of the Controlled Substance Act. When you take DHEA supplement, you are not really adding anything artificial to your body, rather you are assisting your body to return to its natural useful condition. With the time, each, prod each organ is produced less and less DHEA necessary for the balance of the body, and as each of us is different, uh, the biochemical transformation of the organism will be specific for each individual, and therefore there cannot be any standard prescription and of DHEA. Those prescriptions must be done strictly under biochemical monitoring. Reaction of each person are different and treatment must be adapted for each case. DHEA has been reported to be safe in human in daily dose up to 2,000 milligrams, which is roughly 40 times more than what you, will, you would probably ever take in one day and even higher. According to Dr. Regelson, one of the world leading experts on DHEA, there is no lethal dose. You cannot kill an animal with DHEA, he said. In our case, a very small number of women taking high dosage, which is about 100 milligrams per day, experience unwanted hair growth, which was reversed when they stopped taking DHEA, so it's nothing serious there. So when taking oral supplement of DHEA, it is important to note first that the DHEA is pharmaceutical grade. Um, as I say, because it's free to buy it in the States, you can find in the market a lot of product labeled DHEA, which doesn't mean that they really have some DHEA inside, or only DHEA, or if the dosage on the box is real. So if you take some DHEA, or if you prescribe some DHEA, it has to be pharmaceutical grade. That's number one. Two. The dose one person would take should correspond with his or her need. It's not because you know someone who feels much better taking 50 milligrams that you should take 50 milligrams. It doesn't work like that. And also, antioxidants are available to the no, antioxidants should be available to the liver because DHEA can promote free radicals in the liver cells. And it's interesting to know that DHEA amount shown to cause liver damage is 20 times more than necessary to produce anti-aging benefits, so it's not very, very dangerous. But still, alpha-lipoic acid, vitamin E, and NAC are antioxidants that have been shown to be especially effective in suppressing free radicals in the liver. DHEA could be taken, can be taken either on empty stomach or with meal, but probably the best approach would be to take it first thing in the morning so you won't forget it. Concern over bioavailability are unnecessary. As I say, there is more than 4,000 studies now published about DHEA, uh, almost all of which involve giving DHEA orally with drinking water, so it's no risk there. In any case, the monitoring of the organism needs particular knowledge. The standard dose of 25, 50, 100 milligrams are far from being a panacea. These doses are even contraindicated in some cases. To propose the HEA as an anti-aging aspirin is an oversimple explanation of the anti-aging management. It is of the most importance to determine the exact amount of DHEA necessary for each person based on biochemical result, not only DHEA and DHEA sulfate, but all the steroids hormone and even thyroid hormone and IGF-1 the study of interaction with the different hormone, tracing the different modification induced by DHEA during the treatment, and interpreting those modifications with symptoms and the clinical study of each case. So just to conclude, yes, DHEA is very interesting. Yes, it's very promising. No, you cannot take it just like that because it sounds good. Um, blood test before is definitely requested, not only before but even during the course of the treatment. It's very interesting also to note that DHEA have different action on men and women. Um, it was 
as I say, proven that he has a heart protection, real activity on men. It doesn't show the same thing on women. It seems to raise libido more on women than men. Um, so it's also strength. So we still have a lot of things to learn about DHEA. But so far, I hope that with, with all those studies, and I have more studies, but it's kind of boring to read all those uh, studies, just to let you know that there is a lot of backup, a lot of medical work to prove that DHEA is indeed interesting and maybe something for the future.